Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Here on the Sheenapreneur channel, I share information about government contracting, veteran business content, and other business tips. What's going on, everyone? This is Sheena, aka Sheenapreneur, your favorite veteran, and I'm back in the building and I have a very, very, very special guest. As you can see by the title, we are branding in your backyard with my bestie, like my bestie bestie, <laughs> Bridget Steele. She is in the building, and today she's going to be giving us like her super secret sauce on how to get like local contracting by just being yourself. So branding in your backyard, literally meaning like in your local area, where you live, where you have other establishments set up where you can just go get contracts and you don't necessarily have to bid you don't necessarily have to go into uh federal in sam and do federal contracting literally local contracting just by being yourself so bridget welcome hey. to our show thank you so and much yes like she is my bestie for real y'all like for real for real <laughs> <laughs> and she really helped me a lot with like marketing for sure but also like being in the room. So she is the shiznit when it comes to this. And she's like, Sheena, look, you got to get out here and talk to people. I'm like, well, y'all know I'm an introvert. I don't like to talk to people. I don't like to do that. <laughs> but she has proven that this is the way that you are supposed to go at the local level. And she's really, really taught me a lot. So Bridget, and she's Air Force, so like, that's okay. I'm giving her a little pass. Number one, aim high. <laughs> She getting a little past because, you know, she my friend or whatever, but, you know, she's, she's served, she's a veteran, you know what I'm saying? And so she's built her company from scratch. We love that girl power. So please give us a, your background and a little bit about your business. Thank you so much, Sheena. And she is my bestie, y'all, like best real facts. I was so excited about this session. It was just another excuse for me to post all of our pictures on social media and you all know that we have something special for you all. So as she said, my name is Bridget Fields. I am a Air Force veteran also, as Sheena said, and I own Design Show Marketing. We're an advertising and communications company that specializes in behavioral marketing, especially when it comes to public health. So that means like your vape campaigns, tobacco, DUIs, things that help people change their behavior to help the good of the community. And then we also help government contractors Hopefully, like everybody in this room, including uh, Sheena, <laughs> building their digital footprint and branding when it comes to being a government contractor. Because when you look professional, that's going to build trust with possible team and partners, primes, even contracting officers today. And then we have a third division, which is Design Show Community, where we help municipalities, associations associations, nonprofits, when it comes to things like uh, programs, initiatives, uh, recruiting, and also education such as school. So I love, 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 love what I do. You broke up a little bit. You said such as schools and what? Uh, such as schools and educational institutions. But talk yo ish. You hear that? She said she got the vision divisions in her company <laughs> and that's really important because like several things that you said of course is important so one of the things is that you have divisions within your company because a lot of people will ask me like okay i have this company should i do separate companies within the company like how should i break this thing down like you know that type of thing oh wait a minute we got a little we got the oh we we got endorser torrent said design show does amazing work I love it. So that's that's the endorsement right there. And I know, of course, she's my friend. So I'm always going to, you know, but you know how sometimes you have like a hairstylist or something that's like your cousin or your friend. And you're like, oh, they do great work, but they really kind of don't. But she really does. Like <laughs> took our like we even won an award for like the best website and her team de um, developed our website for real, for real. So she really does amazing work. Her team is is second to none. So going back. So your um, the visions that you have in your company, you're like hyper focused on on marketing, but also marketing in three separate ways, the way that you described it. And then also having a personal mission. Right. So your personal mission, again, because I know that went on over everybody's head. So <laughs> bring that back. Yeah. So taking it a little bit back to when I was in the Air Force, my back background is in healthcare. I worked in operating rooms. So everything from knee replacements to 
uh, delivering babies, eye surgery, cataracts, plastics, nose jobs, breast implants, all those things in the military uh, we help do. And then I went on to running a clinic. So being a practice manager in urology, once I got out of the Air Force, I was working in my hospital from the top hospitals here in Atlanta. Uh, but the main reason that I did go into, uh, well, the main when we started Design Show, the main focus was bringing healthcare literacy to underserved communities, meaning that helping communities that don't know how to understand the prescription bottles, like how many pills to take, like that's an issue, or even access to getting to the hospital. You know, as you know, when hospitals shut down in communities, then that leaves a problem of how are they going to get to the hospital. Also, when it comes to understanding their health, so creating those educational materials that they can understand and read so they know how COVID is spread or how to prevent the spread uh, of diseases. So that is my main focus. And it all started from um, when my, me and my dad, we would go to rural communities and go to like churches and explain to, you know, um, unserved communities, you know, black people, how to understand what the doctor tells them. So wow. that my vision, bringing physicians to people that look and sound like them for better healthcare outcomes. <laughs> Yo, they, okay, look, so I am almost like not medical illiterate, like I went to massage therapy school, so we had to learn a lot about anatomy, and when I was in Korea, we had to do a catheter, like the thing, well, the one that goes in your hand, that's a catheter? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I was shaking more than the person that was getting the catheter. And I was like, medical ain't for me. It ain't for your girl at all. So <laughs> for someone to really have, oh, that's right. My sister's in medical. I forgot. Uh, what's up, India? So she Hi, said, India. it's so common uh, for patients not to understand their medication. So and another endorsement. So Bridget knows what the she talking about, right? <laughs> so I knew I wasn't med like medical wasn't my, wasn't my ish. And for, for you to have like that much experience working, especially working in the operating room and delivering babies and all that, like what? That is major. And then you brought that over to marketing, whereas you wouldn't even necessarily connect those things. So that's like super dope. And she turned her passion, like including your dad um, into, you know, a part of your mission and something, something that you all did together. And then you brought it over to what you do now and like helping people understand. And then like, oh, let's advertise what people don't know. Like bringing that over to marketing is just like fantastic. I love it. I love it. Um, Absolutely. Oh, look, wait, you got, how much do you charge for web development? Oh, look, <laughs> she gonna, I'm gonna put all her information. Um, hopefully at the end, I'm just gonna add it to the, to the comments so you guys can see that as the last message. And then I'm gonna put her information in the um, description. So when I tell you, yo, fantabulous, I ain't telling no lie. And she real strict. She'll be like, oh, you know, this newsletter ain't, it ain't gonna work. It ain't but only it. because I care. If y'all don't succeed, then I don't succeed at the end of the day. I know people have hired uh, people on Fiverr and hired like uh, someone to do your stuff and you were not satisfied. Her team, I'm not just saying they like they second to none. Um, so I'll put her information in the description and as the last comment when we wrap up. Okay, boom. So you started doing your business design show and then you were like, okay, I want to do government contracting. How did that transition come in? You started your company. I forgot what you said, which year that was. So we started in 20. Well, we went full time because that's when it really starts in 2016. That's when I quit my job. So everybody, that's that point where you're working your nine to five and you're daydreaming about your job as you're going to work at lunchtime. You're making those phone calls. And it just really got to the point where. I just really had to step out on fate because if you can bet on anybody, you should be able to bet on yourself. And yeah, ever right. since 2016, it's been an amazing roller coasters of ebbs and flows. Absolutely. Okay. So you were, and you got another, okay. So the same person naturally tech bought a capability statement from you when in the course, <laughs> the GovCon now yeah. course. Okay. Yeah. I do have her listed in there because she's the best and that's just what it is. And remember, like, if you feel like this information is valuable, please don't forget the super chat, the super chat. Okay. Super, um, chat. super chat, super stickers, all that good stuff. Um, so, and then make sure you guys are asking your questions. Okay. What's I up? Love questions. Yeah. 
Yeah, as many questions because you know this this topic is like even for me, ooh, even for me knowing her, it some of it kind of goes over my head, you know, because she does it in such a unique way. So please make sure you're asking questions, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, so you transition into it by how did you hear about government contracting? Like what made you interested? I heard made from you a girl named Sheena Parker. <laughs> that is honestly the very first time I heard about Ashley. She just you she you just made it seem really touchable and possible. Like, you know, you hear just hearing that in whispers, but it was it seemed like it was only from people who have been in it for years and they knew the government space. And it's just I, even being in the military. I still didn't feel that imposter syndrome, right? Like I could be in a room with these big government companies bidding on contracts. And so um, once I saw how you moved with it, with your team and bidding, um, then that just really got me interested, especially when government money is guaranteed money, and especially after COVID, when everybody saw their money getting shaken up, it was like, okay, like what can we do to be a little bit more stable? And so that's why I decided to get in. Yeah, like me and Bridget. Um, what's up, Shanita? Ah, star hey. student in the building. Um, me and Bridget met at a military, at, not military, at a veteran business um, program in 2020, the end of 2020, um, the very end of 2020. And so that's the time, I guess, you know, that's all I was doing was government contract and I wasn't doing anything else. So it was Bunker Labs, Bunker Labs in person. So I just, that's all I talked about because that was really all I knew. <laughs> and, um, you know, hearing about it, I know everybody's kind of like, like she said, a little timid about it because, you know, you only think about federal contracting, you only think about big businesses and huge contracts. And you're like, I'm a little guy. Like, well, how does that even work? And so after, you know, badgering over and over, I think she found <laughs> Right, you know, um, but she kind of did it without me. She did it without me. Like I was, I was like kind of alley oop, and then walked away. And then she, you know, LeBron slammed it and dumped it, and like really, really brought it out. So going into that, you know, we're gonna hop around a little bit because I want people to to understand that this was a pro, a very specific process that you followed. I was like, you don't even need to do all that, but she proved me all the she way. She did. Wrong. She's like, just did, 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 did. That's my like, you know, call sign. So when you first started getting into how you wanted to do it, what was your strategy? Great question. The strategy is when it comes to marketing, we do a lot of positioning. So I wanted to make sure that we positioned our company in the government space in the right spot. Um, we started by finding out what agency spent the most in our Nate's codes, right? Because of course, that's who we want to uh, come up with and find out about. Hmm? Nate's code. So you're saying when you say what agency is spending your Nate's code? So what is that? What does that look like for people that don't know? Like you started researching. Like how does that look? Yeah. So I started researching other advertising companies that were already in government contracting to see what Nate's codes they were using, what their website looked like, how it compared to mine, and then also what I'm actually capable of doing. So there's a couple of things where I had to really boost up my company in order to be competitive. A lot of them had public relations, and that's something that we didn't dabble in. But in the federal space, that's a big um uh, Nate's code that uh, agencies spend money on. So we had to really up the ante there. So when you said that you had to kind of add P, um, pu PR, public relations, <laughs> see, that's how slow I am about this. So when you had to add that, did you just add that to um, your capability statement? Did you like hire somebody who's in PR? Like, how did that look? Yeah, so it's all of those things. I added it to the capability statement, added it to the website, of course, went to YouTube University so with to learn about public relations and then also start building relationships with actual public relations companies and people. So because, you know, it takes a while to find someone who you're able to work with in your company. So looking on LinkedIn, going to different media events. Wow. OK, that's that's interesting. So she started dating <laughs> i told you anybody who's ever listened to me i say when you hire someone that's not like an employee of your company y'all y'all are getting married because 
you have, this is a very, very, um, there's a lot of trust that's involved in these relationships. And if this person is going to be representing your company and something as huge as PR, that's living in scrubbing toilets, right? So these people are <laughs> like literally representing you and the agency that they're doing the PR right. for. So you have to like date them. Y'all going on nine dates. Okay, and right, or more right. to make sure that they know how to speak, that they can they can deliver. So you had to add something that you didn't really have, and the person had to be vetted to the twenty millionth power, right? Right. So like so, you said, that's setting up consistent meetings every two weeks. Like that first meeting is nothing. That meet and greet it takes away more maybe twice a month, maybe a lunch. Um, also just looking at how they move online, what they've done in the past. Cause like you said, they're representing your company, but also like DOD putting out nationwide statements. So, you know, nobody wants to be <laughs> the company that puts out false information. You don't want to get blackballed so early in your career. And guess what happens? So she hires this person, you know, like not even hire, but bring them in as a sub. And then they put out the wrong information. Who are they blaming? They're blaming Design Show. And they're going to say, well, not our problem that you hired a sub. Because all y'all talking about, oh, all I got to do is go find somebody. Don't get me started. Because, you know, that raises my blood pressure. When y'all talk about, like, the middleman and all that stuff. You have to date these people. Like, you can't just pull somebody out of the sky. <clears throat> See how mad I got? You can't pull somebody out of the sky and say, Oh, they can go do it and you don't know anything about them and how they roll okay off the soapbox so um casino said that bridget did his capability statement his yeah. fire. i've seen it it's fire so um day old movement we move okay seeing sheen experience on youtube videos and spending hours watching more of those videos is what drew me into starting my own company this month yes right. I love those stories. I love those stories. Uh, and please share what that is. We move, I'm assuming it's a moving company. So just drop, um, you know, what, what it is that you do. So boom. Okay. That's great. So you, you are looking for companies who are already doing what you do and just kind of like mimicking them, right? Exactly. Uh, if it was a multi-million dollar advertising company in the federal space, so what are they doing? And then you have to make a decision if they're going to be a friend of foe, right? It's an incumbent. So what do we need to do? Huh? Enemy or frenemy. Exactly. Exactly. And so the best thing to do is just make a lot of uh, friends in, in this space because you never know. And even the big companies, you know, they uh, look for smaller companies to work with. So that's the strategy that we did. We started looking at advertising companies who were winning and winning in our Nate's codes, sending out an email. Hey, this is Bridget from Design Show. We do this, that, and the third. And the things that we did tell them, our value proposition, is after we did research on the company. Because when you go to these primes, <laughs> you got to come with something good. Or they're going to be like, why are you here? Why are you wasting my time? So it's like being there. Peanut butter to their jelly. That's what we want. Talk your shit. <laughs> Listen, if, oh man, that gave me goosebumps. You know why? Because lead with value, damn it. If y'all don't get out of my DMs talking about, oh, let's work on a contract together. What are you bringing me? Sheena already works on contracts. Like, honestly, and I'm not trying to be, I'm real fired up tonight. I don't know what it is. I don't know if I had an extra shot of coffee, but lead with value. She said, I researched the company found out what they do, said, hey, we can help you in this specific way. You're going to get someone's attention that way. That is like beyond gold. Y'all need to do a super chat for that. That is beyond gold because that is something that like nobody does. I don't even think I really did that for real. In all the programs I've been a part of, I don't think I really understood the depth of leaving, leading with value. Yes, they. you want something from them. They know that. But damn, what are you going to give them? Even if it's like, look, some people have come to me and said, I will work for free just to learn, like just to be your virtual assistant for a few hours a week. OK, cool. I may or may not accept that. That's fine. But then you have to lead with something like nobody just wants you, to, especially when they're these larger companies or whatever. They don't want you just like picking at them and they get picked at all day. OK, so with that, did you get a lot of um, like 
did you get any rejection? Did you get a lot of responses? Like, what was that like? I always got responses. Anytime you <laughs> mention to a company a hole or a gap that you can fill, nobody can ever say no to that. So even if it was something like, hey, we can be a project manager for your campaigns, they were willing to say, who would say no to something that they need? Talk your who? shit, yo. So <laughs> she, she was very specific. Very. I mean, like, I really want to drive home this point because no matter what business you have, she made it make sense for them. And these are large companies, you know, very large, multi-million, multi-million dollar companies who are responding to us as the little guys responding mm -hmm. to our emails because she led with value. Like, oh my God, oh my God, just so dope. So <laughs> just got me fired. Yes, I'm a, I, yes, stay fired up. Yes. <laughs> What's up, Shonda? Another GovCon now student. Yes, favorite veteran. You know I love y'all. Um, okay, boom, boom. So you you led with value with these companies, and you know you probably worked with some of them, whether it was like for free or maybe even tried to partner on some opportunities. So what happened after you started getting the yeses? Like, what did you do? So after the yeses, then you have to actually nurture that relationship. So once they say that they are interested in their peak, you're not just going to let it fall by the wayside. It's like, okay, what's next? We uh, They get newsletters from our company so they can know how we're growing, how we're building our team, um, any projects we completed. And we also receive their newsletters as well. It's like you have to engage. A relationship is engagement. You know, you just don't say, hey, and that's it, and you're gone, and you wait for the good time. So, uh, and then we schedule those regularly scheduled meetings once a month we go to their events that's another big thing they love when you come out to support them at their events so very strategic when we uh especially the primes for sure <laughs> wow so what uh some of these companies we would we recognize them the common folk <laughs> um the national institute of health is a real big one they're a big incumbent when it comes to health and Human Services, which was one of our target agency since healthcare literacy was like my thing. Um, so they have these, it's healthcare, you know, there's like research companies that's been around for years and years and years and come to find out they're the ones who are getting these contracts. And so that meant that we had to, and most of them have a um, subcontractor program and you will look Look for their small business development liaison or specialist or something like that. That's the person that you look for in these big companies and reach out and say, hey, my name is Bridget from Design Show. We offer this service, veteran owned. Um, can we set up a call? 15 minutes. Nobody wants a long 30 minutes. 15 minutes, something uh, to pique their interest. And that's what we did with them. So we continue to build with them. And um, when we have a contract, we always want to make sure it's respectful that it's uh, ahead of time. I don't want to bring a prime a contract that's doing like three days. Like that's not not fair. So we make sure that it's at least 12 days, I think, that we set. And that's a number that we set internally within our company where when we reach out, hey, this is what we found. Do you want to collaborate on it? But we also come to them with what we're going to execute in the contract. So by the time that they get it, they're just trying to see, you know, how they can push it through. So. You just said so much stuff. I was trying to like make a mental note. I have my pen. Okay, look. So here what she's saying, right? So she's like getting, she's courting them like by sending them newsletters, okay? So she's staying at top of mind. So they might be like, who was that company that reached out? Because they forgot a thousand people messaging them. She kept, she added them to the email list. That's a free, that's a free activity, Okay. Mm -hmm. She added them to the email list to send newsletters. So they'll be like, oh, yeah, boom, I remember now. Or they may have totally forgot or anything could have happened. And then if they needed someone at that time, they got a newsletter from her, whatever, last month, last week, right? And then also she's in marketing, remember. So you're in marketing, but then she's going to the healthcare events. Y'all ask me all the time, what's the best events to go to? It may not be a marketing event. She's going to her target. Her target is medical. So she's going to medical events. And these people are like, I don't even know how to like, how do, how do I get this on TV? Like, how do I market myself <laughs> online? These are always in medical. And she's like, well, I have this package wow. for you. And they're like, wow. I'm assuming that's how it goes, right? Yeah. So we 
keep trying to meet them where they are, whether that's through email, LinkedIn, we go to an event or the meeting. So you can see how you see all those touch points that we have with them. It's like they have no choice but to, you know, when it comes up. And then it's like it's also synergies, too. So, you know, you don't want to asshole, you know, of course, you can't work with that. So, you know, fill out the personality as well with the uh, small business specialist. Yeah. OK. And the small, small business specialist. So thank you so much, Dale Movement, for the super chat. We appreciate that tremendously, tremendously, yeah, tremendously. Dale. Um, yes. So um, you also mentioned with some of these companies. They have a small business liaison because they, you know, they've been doing business for a while. So they have somebody dedicated to helping with their, you know, their large company. So it's kind of like they have a small business sector where they bring in small businesses to work with. Now, I, I know on all sides, federal, local, that they have sometimes they have to sub out work to smaller businesses. Like there's a goal that. They have to sub it out to minority business, black businesses, um, female, veteran, whatever. Um, so that's who you will work with on the small bit with the small business liaison. But she also is following up. Like y'all suck at following up. Like you'll send one message, you didn't get response, it didn't work. You have to follow up to death. I mean, like mm -hmm. until they tell you no. Until so they, they say, don't contact me again, or I'm going to press like, charges. And that's when I'd be like, okay. <laughs> Bye -bye, bracelet. But she already has other companies that she's working with. So it's not going to be as painful, hopefully. So, okay, we got, thank you, Mikey. Great topic. Appreciate it. And the super chat. Ah, my favorite photographer, Mikey. Appreciate you so much, so much, so much. Um, so we got about 30 some people on here. So make sure y'all hit that like button, share if you feel like this information. Well, is I wanted to add something for that as well. Please. So communication matrix, that's what I call it. So that's when we it's you have to track the people, the primes or teaming partners that we contact, right? Because like you say, you send one email, you don't know when you send it, if they responded. So it's like a sequence. So it will like call. Two days later, email, you know, a month later, set a meeting. It's like it's on a consistent schedule. So that's our communication matrix. And you set those up in Excel and it's beautiful. So do you use a service like Hub, HubSpot or anything like that? Thank you for asking. Yes, I use Monday.com for our uh, pipeline and project management. And it works wonders because when you're bidding on contracts and you have all this information and pieces of information and resumes floating around and the contracting officer, if you spoke to them, it's a great way to keep up with that. You have to, or it's going to be bananas. <laughs> right. When you start <laughs> communicating with a lot of different people and there's going to be a lot of money flowing around, you need to have that in place right away. So go back through it again. So it's called, so you find them on the interwebs, right? I guess. The uh, primes. Yeah. So you find them and then call. And so go through those steps. Right. Right. So it's a process of looking at like USA spending, finding these advertising companies, see what types of contracts that they want on, see what agency that they want them with. So since we want to work with health and human services, we dig it all through their files. How many health and human services contracts do you win? How much was that for? What year? What kind of project it was? Um, and then that's how we know, kind of know the contracts they've been getting. So when we do speak to them, you know, it's nothing like a, a, someone calling you and they already knowing about your company. So that's what we do with that. Gotcha. So for those, and that's my mommy, Rosemary. Thank Hi, Rosemary. you. <laughs> so, um, okay. Those who don't know, USA Spending is basically like the, the like open internet for federal contracts. Like any federal money that your company has is gonna be on USA Spending. So if you didn't know, now you know. And that's a good way to, I use it to vet companies that I wanna work with. Cause it also shows if they have any federal loans. Like they got money from like the, the PPP or, or IDLE or whatever. And it shows whether they're in default. That's the first thing I check. I'll be like, uh, no, let me, let me just at least check that. You know, I just, I need to know. <laughs> So it's a good way to, but it's only tracks federal. So if you have local contracts or commercial, it's not going to have that. But, you know, some companies that you're looking at and you want to see if they're, you know, 
go get the federal um contracting so boom all right so we got a question little interlude yeah. here um dale movement what's your advice for a startup who plans to work with subcontractors on the contracts they plan to bid for okay so, a little bit but go ahead uh, what's your advice to start work with subcontractors number one know what you have to offer know what you can execute in the contract because you have to know that before you work with anyone else you have to know where to place them you have to know what to listen for when you're speaking to them um so that's that's as far as you know is what i have got you yeah that's um you know you're dating them again like if listen <laughs> just take the, take the government contracting out of it and if you were to vet someone to do something in your house like that's the easiest example i can give people if you want to work with them you want them to work on your house how would you vet them sometimes you don't care you're like oh whatever the home warranty person sends over or the person in the um whatever that works in the subdivision on everybody's stuff but for those who kind of want to just see, make sure that you're getting someone that's reputable or if you're going say you're going to a doctor or you're going to a massage therapist or something like that where you have like let me just do a little bit of research to make sure this person's not is is legit it's the same thing and it may be a new company that you're trying to help get off the ground which is cool too but you'll get the signs yo if they don't respond to email ever if they don't respond to calls if they don't respond to to text or they just you know in your shanana if they're the right person like you just know and then sometimes you can't predict you know the inevitable if something was to go wrong in a contract but this whole not knowing people that you bringing onto your team that's going to represent your company is dead like don't do that no more y'all stop doing that out here that's very 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 dangerous you will not last long in this here government contracting world so yeah okay cool so thank you for that um, yeah. So now we got to get into the stuffs, right? So what services do you use for looking for your contracts or looking for bids or like any special specific programs? Yeah, so we went through a couple. Of course, you do your market research and you ask your peers, as I've asked you 36 times, which one you use. And then, of course, we ask the millionaires, right? The people who are making money, what do you use? And I got a lot of gov was it gov wise is that what gov win is one gov win is one and even the obstacles and contracting officers so people on the other side of the table i'm asking them you know what have they heard of and used and we finally landed on um uh bonfire and that's because for a while we kind of tracked what kind of contracts came out of team georgia marketplace out of bitnet direct so again going back to monday.com Every time we received an email uh, for RFP, we would put it, it was like a ticker. And so, and then also knowing who you want to work for. Bonfire, they had ATL Beltline, which I love. We're going to get into um, that. They have, we're going to get into that. <laughs> I love the Beltline for those of you in Atlanta. Um, and so that's like, that's one of my dream places to get a contract. But I knew they were there. They had a lot of um, Department of Health contracts. So you want to make sure before you sign up with one of those platforms that you really do your research and know what counties they cover, uh, what part, what states they cover. Because if you're here in Georgia and you're doing stuff way out in like Wyoming, I don't, that's, that's not too good to start with. Um, but yeah, I love Bonfire. That's interesting. And I just got to throw this up here because Oh my God, Caitlin, this Caitlin. is my program manager, yo. She is the best of the best of the best of the best, okay? And she said, awesome duo right there, right here, sharing some serious knowledge. Thank you so much, Caitlin. Like, when I tell you Caitlin is everything, y'all can't have her, because look, we're going to be working together forever. <laughs> so don't even, ask. don't even ask. Thank you, Caitlin. Um, so yeah, with, with that, like, using the different... Pro programs of course y'all know i use gov directions um that's my favorite but again that's really important to know what bonfire does for you because even with um gov directions like i've had a few people tell me well they don't like it because it seems like with the federal contracts it comes out too close to the date which mm -hmm. is kind of true um you know it's, it it just whatever flavor so there are a lot of free services that people can use there's you know even with the state of georgia has its own website 
but it doesn't have everything and that's free. Um, so she just said, okay, I'm gonna make an executive decision. <laughs> so, I, mm -hmm. so I can use, it's a commercial service, but it works, you know, with capturing um, the solicitation. Now, does it capture federal and local? Yes, it captured federal and local for the counties that we marked at the very beginning, like your Cobb County, Gwinnett County, yeah. uh, bits, it captures all of those. And that's what you want to make sure, because some of these platforms are heavy in certain regions. Yeah. Um, like there's one, there's a vendor link in this heavy for Florida contracts. So I was going to say, so do you bid on anything out, out of state? In the Southeast region? Yes. I may get feel froggy and vote on something, you know, I mean, not vote, bid on something in Texas, but I know the area, I used to live out there, I have contacts out there. So I think places where I have um, contacts and relationships like Virginia, California, that's where I started uh, bidding on contracts at. I love that because that's, that's the same thing for my company. For Foresight, we bid on stuff that's, I got peoples, or at least people that will go, are willing to go there. And that's also, I think it's pretty important because I've had people um, that will bid on something in Alaska. And I'm like, you know, I don't know, like for products in Alaska, I'm not saying don't do that. I'm just saying, you don't know the logistics, like you don't really know. And I think it's not as beneficial to bid on something where you know nothing about that state. Like for example, New York and California has the highest, um, what's it called? Uh, wage determination. The, the minimum wage is super high and their laws for employees are way different. And so just those two states. So it's like, oh yeah, I'm going to do something in California, but you, you acting like it's Georgia, like no ma'am, or Alabama is light, year, light years apart. So yeah. Mm -hmm. And so um, is it Makai Shea uses my bid match? I feel like I've used my bid match um, I don't know if that's a free service or not. I'm trying to remember. Don't forget super chat, y'all. This is she's dropping like specific, specific. Very specific. I'm all about targeting, target marketing. I brought all of my commercial strategies and everything over to the government space. So it's like you position, connect, and engage. That's the top three things that you do. What is it again? Position, connect, and engage. Yo. <laughs> So you put yourself in a position, right? right? Is that what that is? Put your put your mm -hmm. company in a position to be valuable. And that's internally, y'all. Like you can't just be like, yo, I'm here. Like, no, put your position in a company to be attractive for real. And then the next one is what? Connect. Yep. Connect. So knowing who knowing the decision makers, contracting officers, project managers. All the people who are part of the contract, who are those people? Give me some names and emails, phone numbers, LinkedIn, all of that, all of that. I want to know. I love it. And then <laughs> engage, right? And then engage, building those relationships, nurturing them, sending those emails, supporting them at their events, going to the, the agency events. Super, super dope. That's like, she's, look, super chat. Okay. <laughs> Don't let it get dry out here. Super Let check. me ask you a question, um, Sheena. So Ooh. when it does come to uh, bidding outside of the state, you know, you have your like a creative space, like your advertising where you don't necessarily need a body there versus a, a state where you actually have to put a body there. Do you think that's a big determining factor or is it still like if you're not there, you don't need to bid in that state? Like meaning you have a like what you're doing, having a digital mm -hmm. product. Yeah. We contracts from Colorado and it's like even though we don't have to provide a body there I still want to make sure that we understand the demographics of like wildfires and things like that which we don't Ooh. necessarily have you know let's talk about it that's really good because I know we were talking about a wildfire contract I was like ah you know just not even <laughs> thinking about it because okay let's 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 get into that I like that because if you're like yes um state of Colorado we'll take on all of your advertising no, and you don't really know that they have all kind of stuff. Okay, for example, Colorado is, is weed is legal, right? So, what if you're like an anti drug person yourself personally, and your company stands for like no drugs, no drugs, and then you wasn't even you weren't even thinking that they were gonna say, oh, weed over here, like 
billboard with the arrow pointing <laughs> to the nearest dispensary, <laughs> right? You're like, oh my God, I didn't think they were gonna make me do that. So that's that's a great point. Get into that. Yeah, so that's just really making sure that that goes back into knowing what we can and cannot do. We can do mostly any type of advertising, but we don't really know when forest fires occur most often in Colorado, like what seasons those are. So for those reasons, when we do decide, when we do a go or no go situation for a contract, you know, after we look at the scope and evaluation, that's when I'll determine, okay, no, we we won't go for it. And then also depending on how much it weighs in the evaluation wishing to but then when it comes to sheena she'll be like just bid anyway <laughs> let's go <laughs> no i've been a lot I've, I've changed that model just a little bit because girl been burned over here okay and burned as far as contracts just so to be clear so <laughs> so with that that's really um that's important so you have a no a go no go strategy which i talk mm -hmm. about um a lot of people in this space talk about so basically it's like you have this list of things that you determine okay it's an automatic no if it's this you want to like touch on that just to taste yeah absolutely so you know i'm excited anytime i see marketing in a contract right because i want them all um once i look at the scope and i determine okay this is something we can do then you get to the evaluation sometimes they say that you have to be in the state like they look for a company that has a residence in that county or, or a business license, sometimes depending on how far it's out, because you can get a business license in pretty much any city, um, but you just don't know what that time would look like. So those are the kind of the things that we, and also our bandwidth, right? Um, that helps us decide if it's a go or no go. I love that. And um, make sure everybody hits a like and like on this and share yeah. and see the chat. So um, I like that too, that you said bandwidth because don't I know, <laughs> especially during 2020 when we didn't win anything for nine months. And then the first week of January 2021, we won six. And obviously they were from the year 2020. So I've had people ask me, um, I just bid on 12 contracts. I don't know what I'll do if I win them all. So there's no, there's, Sheena doesn't know. I have no clue if you'll win any of them or all of them or some of them or they'll be delayed or whatever. So knowing your bandwidth is incredibly important. Um, even for one contract, some of these, some of these one contracts almost took the girl out before too. So it's, it really is about the bandwidth, you know? So let me just touch on some of the um, comments. Um, I hope, okay, that's enough for someone else. Okay, they're having a little conversation. You're looking at that. So when it comes to having all, if you're bidding on a lot of contracts and you're having a lot pending, just a part of being a business owner and having those relationships, like you, that's why you have to continuously meet people, follow up with them, put them in a nice organized database. Like, okay, I got Tim, Samantha, Susan, all these people said that if I did get this contract that they're ready, you know, freelancers, small businesses, things like that. Your standby list, your pool, your bucket. So you have to make sure that you have those things all lined up and ready. And that's just being a business owner, really. That's a fact, though. Like, talk your shit because, you know, some of this stuff is regular business stuff and mm -hmm. you just don't do it. We're treating it like a side hustle, no shade. But I mean, you know, once I feel like the government, if you start off your business doing government contracting, the government, forces you to be a big boy, big girl. You know, you might've been doing other businesses, side hustles, and the government is like, uh, no, we need to see this operating agreement. We need to see these resumes. We need to see, and you're like, what? You know, so they're kind of like leading you toward being a bigger business. That's why I kind of, I was like, you giving me instructions on what to do. I like this. Like I really enjoyed how that process worked. So again, this y'all are staying with us on this. So you must really love what Bridget is talking about. I'm loving it. I'm fired up. So don't forget the super chat and don't forget to like this um, this video. Of course, if you came in late, you can watch the replay. But let's get into some of your open solicitations. So right now, do you have any open solicitations or pending contracts? Yes. So we have a pending contract for senior marketing. Um, here in Fulton County, we have another one for social media. Okay, let me rephrase that. <laughs> Open right. solicitations, what they are, where they are, how much they are, what they're for. Like, we need deets. 
Details? Oh Lord. Yeah, so it really many. Oh. Remember. I know, I know. She's like, oh, this is like every time I get a solicitation, it's like you know what I know? a lot of um the advertising contracts and communications contracts in this space. So let me rephrase that. When it comes to marketing in the local and state space, they call it communications. And that's one thing that we learned as well, because we were going around looking for advertising and they don't they don't use that language in this local and state space. So if you're in advertising, you look for social media, communications, public relations in the federal space. Of course, it's on a nationwide level. So that's why you'll look up those advertising next code. That makes sense. I love that. Okay, so that is important too, because people in janitorial, they might say custodial. They might. And I had a whole hour long debate with another janitorial company. Like, no, custodial is more like I'm like, no, boo boo. The average agency doesn't know no different. They don't. They don't know. They'll use those words interchangeably. Um, same thing with like litter pickup. They'll use waste. Uh, uh, what what did one of my students sent me something re refused? I was like, what the what is what, what is that? So it might it just depends on what the agency is writing, and especially when it comes to something as like broad as uh, marketing can be, because it could be digital marketing, it could be like you said, communications could be specifically PR, but then like PR could be communications too. So if you have to really know, like use all of those key words. Um, you know, all of those key words when you're working with different agencies. And so we're talking about you're on the local side mostly. And I know you're going after federal stuff too, but on the local side, right, you are, um, you have some that are open right now, specifically local or are some of them federal as well? No. So we actually changed our strategy. We're the federal space that takes a lot more nurturing. Okay. And so we're still, you know, sending those emails, doing those dinner meetings, but on the local space, we're uh, more face to face. Uh, that's moving way faster uh, than I thought it ever would. Um, so yeah, we're building, yeah. Uh, going to those events and things like that. That's how we're building on a local level. Okay. So let's go back. Do you remember the dollar amounts for any of the open, um, like the pending contracts that you have? Yeah, I only remember one because it seems like they, a lot of them at this local level in communications, they either, or you either bill them or you send them your price. So I haven't seen a lot of fit sperm prices, only once. And that was for um, a production, events productions, and that was 300K. But otherwise, we... that was cute. I like how you just kind of like, how does it Okay, look. So what is it? So how long is it? Is it a the person has to have boots on ground every day? Yeah, so uh that was one of the Beltline contracts and they did they do have to have boots on the ground every day. It's over 50 events. Um the contract is for 300k. Um, and then when it comes down to these contracts, again, that bandwidth, y'all, I'm telling you, like, you have to know what you're capable of doing, especially if, you, if you're going to be there in person, because that could technically be your whole business and you're doing that full time. So ain't no time to do nothing else. So that's why you really have to make sure that you can execute these contracts. But yeah, that was 300K on a local level. And that was for what, one year? That was for one year. Yep, one year. A lot of the marketing contracts, of course, yeah, at this level, they're one year. Some of them are three months. It's like, it's like you're in there and out of there. Yo, in and out. okay, look, 300,000. So if this is like your ish, you love marketing, You could. this could be so many different ways. You can hire a specific person that is an, an expert, have them go do that ish, pay them 100,000, pay them 150. And then you keep it 150 for your company or you can give yourself that job because some people have asked me as well. Like, can you be a solopreneur in this? Yes, that's a perfect example. It's one year, 300K. If you if you do it right, then you can live up. Even if you don't you have breaks in between your next contract, you should be able to kind of survive, especially here in Atlanta, survive off of that. Because most people are not making 300K as a self-employed person, period. So that is like really, really important. And that's the local level, y'all. You don't have to go all the way. I mean, I've had some very low federal contracts, so I'm not saying one is better than the other. But when people talk about the dollar amounts, 
$300,000 for one year just to have a person, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna minimize <laughs> marketing, but okay, to go around and sell marketing. I, I mean it in the most beautiful way possible. <laughs> To float around and do events and coordinate. Some people they love that. Like that's what they do anyway for their family. So three hundred thousand. Like, are they? Is it still open? I'm about to go do that. Like, don't play with me. Everybody's an event coordinator now. Put some balloons yeah. out there today. Match the colors. <laughs> like I can do that. You know what I'm saying? But you know, respect. But yeah. So that's three hundred k for a solicitation. So I want to highlight that. Bridget just won, like ju it fresh, like the ink is still wet on the con on her contract that she just won. What last week? Yeah, it was last week. Last, it was last week. She was like, "I just won a contract." <laughs> I was like, <laughs> "What?" <laughs> like blues. Confetti. I was so excited. She she didn't even sound excited. She was like, I just I was real. I just don't feel like anybody's gonna be excited. I was screaming inside of my body and like I was I was, I was elated. You haven't heard that word in a while. I was elated. I was elated. really excited. <laughs> That's when you know it's real. She was like so calm. And I'm over here like, wait, what? Like, call me right now. Are you serious? This is beautiful. So tell us about that contract, okay? Cause that one, did you bid on that one? I did. I bid on that, on one. that one. That's mm -hmm. okay because we don't talk about like like how she positioned herself. So how does that contract look? So that contract is we bill them for the work that we do. So they we go to our first meeting on the fourth so we can find out what exactly they need from us. Um, it's for public relations and marketing for the city of East Point, which Again, I when you're able to pick the places that you work and just knowing this community and they need a lot of help when it comes to marketing and healthcare, like I think that's the main reason why I was excited because we're actually going to make a difference and we're going to get paid because it's a contract. So if anybody is familiar with Georgia, East Point needs a little help. Okay? <laughs> and contrary to popular belief, I mean, respectfully, Lord, Tyler Perry Studio didn't really do a whole lot for East Point. I used to live in East Point. That was my old stomping grounds. But I feel like Tyler Perry Studios is on an island on his own within East Point. It's like the rest of it looks exactly the same way it did 15 years ago when I used to live there. But she's going in there, and I guess they're really, really trying to bring people, bring business into the city, right? Yeah, so with advertising contract at the city level, a lot of them are like almost like tourism, like every place is a fun place to live, work and play, right? So that's pretty much what this public relations is, you know, crisis management, you know, of any, I think they just had a city councilman who uh, lost about 800k. And just watching the news, that was another thing that I put on my stories on Instagram, CEO design show, by the way, um, is that if you watch the news like when they had that uh devastation in hawaii um prayers to them but the first thing i thought about was fema and then supplies so you know just look at the world that's going on around you and also like it's like i said channel two news your local news so when that happened and then when they closed down the hospital in east point like i, I knew they were going to call me sooner or later because i can see it falling apart and then that goes all back into knowing exactly what they need in that community so so when I do go to speak with them, I already know what's going on there. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. So that was, I mean, I guess it's, you're in Atlanta. So East Point is like right up the street. So that's mm -hmm. literally your backyard. And she bid yeah. on this contract. And how many people, okay, we're going to ask how many people won. And then do you, are you going to share numbers with us? <laughs> I think it's the numbers to the four. You don't get the numbers yet. Mm -hmm. I don't get them until the fourth, until gotcha. that meeting when I have to meet all the city councilmen and stand there and then let them know again, you know, what our company does. And so, again, just knowing what you do and having confidence in it, that's super key in the local area. That's interesting because that's a little different than some other contracts that, you know, people would be bidding on when they have to input numbers. So there are contracts that you bid on and i forgot and caitlin probably still on because she she is our master of reading this verbiage honey so 
I believe it's like you get shortlisted. Shortlisted is one is one way to describe it, but I know sometimes you'll win a contract and they're like it's like an IDIQ type thing where it's indefinite. I just went over this in one of my videos. Indefinite, God dog it. Um, quantity, indefinite, whatever it is, basically meaning like there's there's a cap, maybe, but they know they're gonna need you for this service. So it may not be a specific number at that time. So let's pop back in here real quick to the questions. Make sure y'all like and please, please, please super chat. So um, yeah, Glamour Goddess Boutique, what platform is it again? Um, let us know what you're talking about. Is that a platform that we mentioned? If so, she mentioned she uses Bonfire. Um, Caitlin to the rescue. Yes, litter pickup, debris removal, waste refusal, environmental cleanup. All that could be the same thing, just depending on what agency um, we're talking about. Make so, a list of all your keywords. Yes, that's a really good point. All your keywords, because that'll just help you. Even if you bring somebody else onto your team, then they'll know too. Because if you bring in somebody new to your team, especially y'all that hire these overseas virtual assistants, no disrespect. Shout out to Belay, because I, I use Belay now. Um, they are magnifico at virtual assistants that are in the US. And to me, that works for me. But when you're hiring people and you're they don't know, they might just look for litter pickup and that's it. And you don't know, they don't know that they need to look for other words as well. Um, thank you, hopeful real is it realty? Reality? I can't talk thank you so much for the super chat thank you thank you thank you we appreciate you tremendously um so i had a few quite had a few comments up too okay hopefully okay well look mention mention them again please put them all in one chat and then i will answer all your questions okay i'm sorry about that um so is it Areth arethia rogers good evening ladies and everyone and rfp aim looking to ask to demonstrate capability how do you ladies accomplish that on paper? An RP aim looking to ask to demonstrate capability. Okay. So you want to answer that? Do you get that question? No, no, go, you go ahead and I'll piggyback. Okay. So I think you're asking demonstrate capability. So the RFP is saying, how can you demonstrate this? How can you execute essentially or demonstrate that you have the capability to do it? That's what I'm assuming you're asking. Um, and with that, you would have to show the past performance or um show a subcontractor if you already you already dated them you already vetted them and you're demonstrating that you can do this capability because i don't know how it's written they might say can you demonstrate this capability yes or show where you demonstrated this capability or they may say they may give a scenario base where it's please demonstrate with how you know how many employees you're going to use what type of day and a lot of stuff i'm going to mention is always going to be geared toward um janitorial and stuff like that so forgive me but you know how many bodies are you going to use what kind of cleaners are you going to use um are you experienced with using this type of thing so you're showing yes we understand basically what you're saying so that's my understanding mm -hmm. of what you're, she said yes so um that's pretty much what what you would do to demonstrate the capability yeah. Um, and yeah, the past performance, uh, like she says, just like on your resume, like the name of the uh, task that you did, descriptions, nice and simple and short. We did this. Like you don't have to make it a whole soliloquy. They don't want you to, you know, did you, what did you do? Um, that <laughs> how much the, the contract was valued at. I know sometimes they look to see if you even handled that type of money before or, uh, in a contract. and. Um, um, yeah, that's about it as far as past performance. How do you put the, and that's how you put that on paper. Your references, of course. Um, everything to you know how you do what you do, how you do it. And so they really, you know what, they really look at processes too. It's the government. You know, even though they're not gonna execute the process, they just want to know that you know the process, how you're gonna report it to the person, how often you're gonna report it. Um, risk management, what if something goes wrong? How are you going to correct those errors? So that's those are the things that you answer to show that you're capable of handling it. And always include a quality control plan. Like that is what has gotten me a few contracts where I wasn't even in the state. There were like 20 bidders, but they wanted to see that plan. Even if they don't ask for it, you can have a smaller one. 
um, where it's only a few pages and you can have a robust uh, quality control plan where if this, then that, what happens if someone doesn't show up to work? They want to know because trust me, if they're asking all that, they've been burned before, honey. They've been burned before and they are scarred. Okay. Deep. They bitter and scarred like really bad. And they don't want to go through that again. So that's usually why they'll ask, like, show us how you can do this. Okay. So let's get into, yes, Caitlin, IDIQ, indefinite, thank you, delivery. I couldn't get it out. IDIQ is indefinite delivery, indefinite quad, quantity. So sometimes that includes a, a dollar amount or sometimes it's just like whatever, because we don't really know how much of this thing we're going to need. Okay. So that's pretty much what that, what that means. So um, hopeful reality. I am completely new to understanding the world of government contracts. I'm located in Arlington, Virginia, near DC. I have no idea where to get started if my business is suited for contractors. Well, let us know what your business is for one. And then two, you start here. Like what? You start in the GovCon now program. Okay. And I have a few of my students that might still be on right now. They can attest. Go to my Instagram, my YouTube. Well, you're on, well, I don't know. Yeah, you're on YouTube right now, but my YouTube and my Instagram, Machinapreneur, is the same name. So you can figure out how to get started. GovCon Now program, I teach you from the very beginning all the way through federal, local, and corporate contracting. If you're a veteran, I got stuff for my veterans as well. Okay, Caitlin, you do uh, a good right of method of approach. Okay, look, Caitlin to the rescue, y'all. This is my program manager. She is dropping, 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 dropping. Okay. So you do a good right, uh, right of a method of approach to describe how you will perform and meet all requirements. Yeah, method of approach. That is the key words. If you use chat GPT, method of approach. That's what you're doing. And then Aretha says, thank you so much. Um, and yes, thank you for the insight. You are so welcome. Okay, boom. So we're going to get into how Bridget pretty much like... Put herself in the right place so she already touched on going to events dating courting all those things and so tell us how you do your events like do you show up and you're like handing out your capability statement are you giving out your business card are you like you know bump rubbing elbows with the agency heads like how does that look great question um i go to events that make sense that's one thing I learned as an entrepreneur in the beginning, just going to any and every networking event, especially in a place like Atlanta, where there's like 136 each day, you're going to waste a lot of time. So make sure that the event that you're going to is someone who is there to help you propel in your business. So I'll look at, um, yeah, I'll see like if there's any contracting officers there or programming officers there. I'll connect with them prior to the event and be like, hey girl, I'm going to see you there. So when I get there, they'll know to look for me or I'll just have some, and that makes me more comfortable too if I know I'm going somewhere and I'll know someone who's going to be there who I'm expected to talk to versus just kind of roaming around like I'm lost. Um, I always have my capability statement queued up and ready to go um, and then PDF form so I can text it to them, send them however they want it. I'll get it, email it to them. Sometimes they ask for that. Um, of course, business cards, because you have those people, those old tradition fashion people, they want some paper. Fine. So be it. I have a digital business card. I can popple it over to you. Like you meet people where they are, however they want the information, you have to be ready to give it to them. So that's what makes it successful for me. I like that. So you, you know, some people like, I don't really carry cards, to be honest. I do have um, a couple sprinkled here and, and she did my business cards and they are fire, okay? So they have the QR code. So I just like, look, just scan this QR code so I can be in your phone so you don't have it balled up in the bottom of your purse or wallet or whatever. So, you know, that's another example of meeting people where they are because the QR code is there, but you also have the business card if you want the paper. She's like, I do LinkedIn too. I'm like, what's your LinkedIn? So we can be connected. And then to me, that's also kind of like a newsletter thing where you'll start to see me pop up and you're like, oh, okay, you know, I remember. And then it's all my business info is right there. And, you know, a lot of people would like to write on the cards, like those who get those glossy cards and all that, like, no, you're supposed to have a space where people can write 
where they know you from, you know, after they come or a special thing about you on the card. So Bridget is doing that and digital. You say you send them a capability statement right there on the spot, like boo, 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 boo. Right there on the spot. But send that over. I've really been liking Popple right now because it collects their information. And Popple. as you said, Popple, P-O-P-L. It's the one where when they do scan it, it's like it's an exchange of information. So you know who you met that night and there's always power in the follow up. And then again, there's no point in meeting all those great people and decision makers if the next day you're not even going to call and talk to them. So within 24 or 48 hours, you absolutely must. Even if it says, hey, we met at an event last night, let's connect in three weeks or whatever. I'm um, just letting them know that you are interested. Like, like It's like dating. You know, you see somebody that you like, you let them know so they can know how to proceed moving forward. Yes, yes. So when she goes to events that are like public events, you are meeting people, like doing the research ahead of time, finding out who's going to be there as best you can. Um, and that includes the, you know, people who say they're going to be there because a lot of people put that on LinkedIn. And then also you're seeing who the vendors are, right? They yep, usually list the vendors them. are. The exactly. Vendor, well, they, and the government events, they list everybody who's going to be there, really. All the keynote speakers, like their name is literally right there. Obstabu of CDC, Gwendolyn Miles. So, you know. <laughs> when, yeah. So, Obstabu, you know, I haven't I haven't used um, Obstabu, but Bridget <laughs> has. OK, so I'm going to ask you about that. But let me get to these, get to a few of these comments. And then I want you to explain what Obstabu is. Um, so Casino says, I still remember when that contract came in my company name for 275,000. <laughs> Cheers to 2023. Yes, Lord. Yes, 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 yes. Um, hopefully, uh, am I am I saying this right? Realty or reality? Reality, right? Is it yeah. reality? Yes, I provide reality. coaching and educational services around personal finance with a focus on how mental health impact our financial decisions. Oop. Might be a connection there, yep. okay? So Might be a definitely a connection. So make sure you reach out to Bridget and leave with value. When you reach out, <laughs> she got, look, she didn't got her contract. She didn't got her little contract now. <laughs> you know how it is. So leave with value, okay? Just remember that. Um, do you ladies niche? I have about four sectors, next industries, where I typically apply my project management skills, thoughts, do you uh, recommend pursuing all four or niche down? That is a fantastic question. Bridget, do you want to talk about pursuing all four what? Yeah, so what are the four? I guess it really depends on how different the companies are. So let's pretend like they're all different. You're doing janitorial, babysitting, truck driving, and making clothes. I would say there's no way for you to be successful because even if you did that in the free world, how can you manage all that? Especially if you're starting by yourself. If you're starting with a team of 10, I would say, okay, you probably got something there, maybe. But um, the large companies who have different departments, they started with one thing. They started, look, Amazon started with selling books and now they do everything, but you can't start off doing everything because how? Like no one can, can truthfully do that. And if you say you can do it, you a lie. I'm gonna tell you to your face, you a lie. <laughs> You need a team, you need processes, you need all of that. So, you know, that's just how that works. Okay. Um, dating government contract. Wait, dating for a government contracts conference. Yeah, okay. Come and see. Dating. That would be fun. I don't know about that, but yeah, okay. Actually, you know what? They do have on the corporate side like a speed dating um thing where a lot of agencies that are like like a couple colas your facebook's or whatever and they'll give you like you can sign up to talk to them and they have 15 minute blocks and you got to kind of like pitch or date them yeah that's exactly what i'm talking about i love those i hate them so i ain't gonna tell no lie I, and that that's is, how it is when me and sheena go out she love it i hate it or it's the opposite we're like the yin and the yin sometimes we do come together on certain things but i'd be like no not I don't need <laughs> so make sure y'all um like this video you guys are staying on so you love what bridget has to say and don't forget the super chat is getting dry 
It's dry out here. She's dropping specific <laughs> tips. You always ask, I need the specifics. I need this. Well, here it goes. She's dropping knowledge about her specific company. So please, please, please um, share some love. So a guy with the niches. There's riches in the niches. That was the first thing that I learned in marketing for sure. And you know, that whole, you can't be a jack of all and master of none. So like Sheena said, if you have those, so you probably have to have a COO or CEO or VP to actually run those companies profitably if you have four. Um, but yeah, definitely niche down to what you know best, you know, what you can do with your eyes closed. Start with that because that will be the quote unquote easiest money for you to get. But then also, so, like I said, look to see how much money is being spent on those Nate's codes. Who's spending the most money? You start with that. That part. Look, and and it, okay, so I'm going to put my little two cents in. You might go the opposite route where it's like, you know, so super niche that like it looks like nobody's doing it. So you might be the only one that's doing it. And that can probably work, too. But. You know, going back to what she said about what can you do with your eyes closed, yo? Like, why make this so difficult? Someone asked me today, like, oh, should I invent a product to sell? Like, what? No, like, Brent was selling pens. Why are we? Why are we inventing products? Like, we don't need to do that. Like, make it. Do the research. It's like, okay, they buy a lot of this stuff, and then they're gonna need someone to to buy pens from from now until forever. They're going to need someone to do marketing now until forever. They're going to need someone to clean toilets now until forever, right? So just, you know, make it work. And then if you decide you don't like it, cool, move on to something else. That's the great thing about government contracting, okay? So Aretha does operations, project management, property management, and admin. Um, okay. that's all, Those are related. Those are related because you were asking about different sectors, right? So Alika, can you do that in any industry or is that industry agnostic or specific to healthcare? Or I'm sorry, you know, just mm -hmm. specific to a, like. to a to a um path, like an industry. So I mean, because okay, if you're doing I'm gonna be real with you, right? Because that's what I do. If you don't have any experience in janitorial, I'm not hiring you to be my project manager, period. I'm just saying. Because like if you're doing it, then it needs to be niche for that industry. You know what I mean? Um, and so let me just jump to what Casino said that project management is going to be niche. Yeah, but it's not like what industry though? Like I don't trust you. If, if I'm a rocket scientist and I am selling rocket scientist consultation to, the, to NASA, and you don't know anything about that. How can you manage this project like effectively? You know, you might have to do some learning, <laughs> but I, I wouldn't. So niche it way down, okay? So and to put it in a different terms as well, if you have to go to the doctor and you have a heart problem, who you go go to? The foot doctor, the general doctor, or the actual heart doctor? You see what I'm saying? You don't want people to have to guess what you're good at like oh is it photography or is it this or is it real estate or is it you know when people have to guess what you're good at i ain't got time for that i just need to know what you're good at yo that that is all <laughs> that okay and thank you mikey for the super sticker appreciate it appreciate it appreciate it Yay. look don't forget she's dropping super super knowledge okay so okay let's see what we got i've heard of the old uh riches riches in the niches uh, yeah, riches in the niches. Yes, 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 yes. Um, hope for reality. With the description of my business, I provided personal finance, mental health. What type of contracts are available? I have no idea. There's gazillions of contracts, so you're going to have to do your research on that. Respectfully, you have to search. I know you're new to this, but um, that's why my course would be perfect for you because we help you find those things, okay? So all MDs are not the same. That is super facts. And yes, yes, yes. Um, it's niche. Janitorial project management is not the same as construction project. Don't we all know that? <laughs> Casino. Back. Okay. All right. So going into the Ostabu. So I, again, I don't really use Ostabu. Um, I probably should, but I, I know about it, but I just don't use it effectively. So explain what that means when you use the Ostabu or reach out to the Ostabu. Yeah. 
Yes, so the obstacle is pretty much your liaison in between yourself, the small business, and the contracting officers. So, for example, when we have pulled the forecast list from Health and Human Services and we are sending emails to the contracting officers to see, number one, if the contract is still valid, because, you know, the forecast list is like a wish list. And so just to make sure, you know, if they're still even available or, you know, more information about it so we can make sure we tailor our proposal to it. If we're not getting a response and it's crickets, then we're just going to have to move up the chain. Right. We learned that in the military. So I contact the obstacle and be like, hey, girl, we don't send two or three emails, you know, or guy or guy (laughs) or male. Um, Make sure you do your due diligence with trying to reach out because they're going to, of course, go run you through. Did you do this? Then the third. Um, But you let them know that Samantha is not contacting you back. Then they'll reach out to Samantha on your behalf. And so, yeah, they're like your liaison. They really help you navigate through that space in the agency. Okay, so if that went over your head, basically, like you are doing everything you're supposed to do with contacting uh, Health and Human Services, Department of the Army, Department of the Navy. You found the forecast list, which, are, like she said, is the wish list. That's basically the agency saying, this is what we think we're going to spend money on in the next year, next quarter. And you, because the first thing an agency is going to say is, did you look at the forecast? And you're going to be able to say, why, well, yes, I did. And it looks like you guys have janitorial services coming up in quarter, the second quarter of 2024. And we want to go after this opportunity. We are service disabled, uh, veteran owned. We are woman owned. We are 8A. And we want to give, we, we want to be able to provide that service for you, essentially. That's what you're leading with. And then the agency is like, cricket, 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 nothing. And you read, you do your follow ups. You, you see if there's anyone else you can email. You send, you know, a thorough, respectful email, and then you still get crickets. You reach out to the Osibu and say, hey, I did what y'all told me to do, what they told me to do, and no one is responding. So how do you find the Osibu? Is there an Osibu for every um, agency or every department? Like, how does the department how you get the info? Yeah, Every agency, there's an obstacle. And, you know, it's the government. They do make it simple. When you go to the website, 98% of the time, it'll say, it have a tab that says obstacle, right? So, you know, <laughs> you click on that. And then also when you when you go into these agencies so you can better, better learn about them and just how their contracts come out and what they're looking for, go to their orientation sessions. I mean, I know most people don't like that, but it's like gold in those sessions. They let you know exactly what uh, they're looking for. And then the people who, the decision makers are at these orientations. So you build relationships with them as well. The obstacle, the project managers, all those people are there in the room. That is a perfect segue to, to Bridget always being in the right room. But real quick, so we got Antonio. When can I get an interview for my three contracts this year? Oh, Antonio, I don't know. I, I ain't know you want to be contract. <laughs> Send me an email or a DM or something. Message me so I can so we can we can chat about that, okay? Because I, I ain't know you won. Congratulations, by the way, though. I love to hear it. Yeah. Hear it. And I, if you can share, if only if I helped you get it, like because you watch my YouTube, but no one else. Okay. Don't be talking about yeah. video. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. But look, yeah, share, share. Um, what you won and and that type of thing. That's fantastic. Congratulations. So um, again, like this, this post, this post, what is going on? Like this video and don't let the super chat get dragged. Okay. Dropping knowledge. So as far as numbers, do you go after contracts of a specific dollar amount? Are you like the world is my oyster? I don't care if it's a billion dollar contract, I'm going after it. Um, say it's right here in Georgia. Let's focus on your local area where you know you can reach out and touch someone. What is like? What does that look like? Do you have a, you know, cap? No, I have no dollar amount. I'm really looking at if I can execute the contract. That's really what I need to do. I know I'm going to get paid for it. And being in the creative space where the margins are like probably the best, I would say, out of all the industries, you know. At the end of the day, I just won't sleep for two weeks and do it myself. But um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I look at the see if we 
execute it. Because we're using it for past performance. Our strategy is that we're using these um, small three month, you know, one year projects for past performance to get to federal. Like that's that's the ultimate goal. We need this. Wow. Okay. So that makes that makes a lot of sense. So some people don't want to take a smaller contract for whatever what does reason. That mean? I don't get that. Take it a small. I don't get. I don't get. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> you know, because some people are going to feel that it has to make sense for them to, you know, leave their job or change their business, which I can respect that a thousand percent. Um, but, you know, just if you've seen War Dogs where he's like, look, we just collected a whole bunch of crumbs and the crumbs add up. You can you can absolutely go that route because some of y'all can't handle a million dollar contract. I'm just being real, like. You're saying yes. I want all these monies, but you cannot handle it. You're solo by yourself. You don't have any kind of accounting system. You don't have any employees. You don't have nothing set up. And you're not, Bridget don't sleep. I promise you. She doesn't she sleep. Does not sleep. Well, you I'm, guys, she doesn't sleep. I've been sleeping this past, this past couple of days. I've been sleeping during the holiday. You know what I'm saying? But like, you have to be in this for real. And you have to do the things, government contracting aside. Do you do? Do you see yourself doing this in your business without government contracting? That's what you really need to ask yourself. If you already were doing business at a maybe a lower level or commercial level, and you don't do the things um, already, then you have to really take a hard look at yourself and say, "Will I be able to come to the table ready? Like, will I be able to do this?" do this like some people value the hell out of their sleep they're like look <laughs> sleep is everything and that, if that's you that's you that's cool you need to make that match but don't go after a 50 million dollar contract where they want you to be fully in it's like getting a million dollar franchise you're not just going to get the franchise and go sit down you're going to be work you're going to be flipping burgers that's what the requirement is for mcdonald's franchise so off my soapbox okay <laughs> So Antonio followed up with, you want a BPA, a purchase agreement for gas and oil for five years. Oh, I need a connection with one of my students because she was trying to go after um, a petroleum contract. And I was like, since I don't know a damn thing about petroleum. So I need to connect you with one of my students. I love that niche. That's good. That's, and that's super niche. And I don't know if you already have. So we do need to do an interview because I need to know if you have history and that and all that kind of stuff. Um, Shanita, one of my star students, small contracts are a great, great way to learn. Yes. You get the past performance because sometimes they just want to know if you've ever done it. They don't ask how long. Um, if you've ever seen my video about pressure washing where we did like over a weekend, we did like a whole school and that was about 25,000. We done for 40,000 pressure washing in like one week um, using an industrial machine. So it's like it still can match up with the heavy hitting contracts, you know, it's just, it's a quick thing to do. So anyway, going into how you do other events, like you did a ribbon cutting ceremony, right? So yeah. how, do you, so with the how do you use the political landscape to do, to get your, to figure out how you want to do your contracting? So on the local level, I look to see what organizations are in the counties that I want contracts with, right? So that's what I decided at the beginning, what geographical areas in Georgia I wanted to do contracts with. And since South Fulton, um, that's one of my main ones, uh, I joined an organization in that area that also consisted of other small businesses. But the key to that, which was very strategic, was I wanted to offer the organization services. And these services is what federal contractors are looking for. So it's almost like you have to do kind of a lost leader in the beginning of offering services to these organizations. Like it may be um, helping them with their presentations or events productions, all the things that you that you research when you look at federal contracts that you know they're going to be wanting past performance for. Um, uh, also, another hack. Oh, go ahead. Wait, 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 wait. That almost went over my head. So you're Did? saying because okay. <laughs> you so you know uh -huh. you know you're you know what you're doing. So for people who are not in the space, 
and I don't think anybody on the call is in marketing. So you're saying that in order to build up your portfolio, uh -huh. you are doing like smaller jobs for organizations. Like let's do your, like you did that with me, right? Like let's do, let's redo your website. It won't take my team much money or effort. So, so expound on that a little bit. Yeah. So when I first started government contracting, I started, I wanted the federal level, of course, right? Everybody wants that big money. And in a way that really helped because we went from reading those contracts to local. So by the time we started reading the local contracts, it was like Dr. Seuss compared to, yeah. you know, what's on the federal level. So we're like, but what? Send. Um, so that's a great way to learn how to read contracts, start up and then go down. Um, I like that. What was the other question about? Uh, the local so yeah so yeah you use you use like helping smaller organizations as kind of like building your portfolio like did you do it for free did you do it for like a discount price did you i did it for a discounted price because this ain't free we can't i gotta eat you know but yeah once i saw what the federal contracts were asking for i noted that down and then i performed that on a smaller level so now i have the exact past performance that they're looking for also you want to try to do the value uh the the contract amount so you know if you're want to if you want to bid on the contract that's 800k then um you know try to at least offer that amount of services to that local level to show that you can handle you know that amount of money when contracting so that's what we did and we used that, it and we just started it's a snowball <laughs> that is so i love that because you know, unlike me, I just dove out, out the plane and was like, oh, my parachute and then found one on the way down. She was super <laughs> she was her strategic. Okay, I just got lucky. I ain't going to tell a lie. But she was super strategic. She started off with who do I want to work with? Federal. OK, federal is looking for this. Let me go down to local and let me go down even further to just agencies who like the cha like the Chamber of Commerce and stuff like that. Right. Other, other yeah. businesses. And then she's, you know, essentially like in a polite way, parading us around, parading the, the, the smaller agencies around. It's not no contract involved. If someone comes to you, especially these chamber of commerce and stuff where they, their money is like this, right? They're you offering them a discount for something that you want to offer the local and the federal government. She took, she basically like went to, it was like college, like you're paying to get the information yeah. or she's actually paying to get the past performance but it was also like she's getting paid so it was that's a mic drop that's, that's a mic exactly drop. i totally understood that friend that was great <laughs> I, that's exactly what i did that's and it worked because we got the past performance and then when you do you know pro you know uh comp things for your community, which you should, your local community, they will be your ambassadors. So at this point, when it comes to references on those proposals, um, they will sing your name to the highest praise because you gave them federal, you know, level work at a local uh, chamber. That is so factual. So, so factual. So let me jump in here real quick. So Antonio says stick on the federal side. That's cool. I started local. Most of my contracts are local. Bridges local. Um, if you got federal, that's super dope. L look, potato, potato. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> federal side is easy. Yeah. Depending on what niche. It's all easy. Truthfully, it's all easy. You just got to make sure that you you just got to read, which most people don't do. Okay. Um, and said, what is the best way to find small contracts? They are all, if you're talking about local and federal, they're all going to be listed. Um, you may need to go back into the, um, go back into the, to the video, the beginning of the video, we were talking about the different websites to use, but um, small contracts are listed the same way as large contracts are listed. And also, Andrew, uh, y'all are awesome. So awesome to come on and share with us. Thank you so much, Andrew. Always a supporter. Always, always, always. Um, contracting officer, put, uh, the USDA. I've been wanting to work with the USDA too. So cool. Yeah. So that's we right. are. Yeah. The U. That's one of my. That's one of my ones. I've been on a few, but it's it's been rough. I haven't won any with the USDA. So you know, it's all about. 
using Bridget's way or bidding. So you bid on federal and local, or you can, you know, build a relationship like she did. So she started with helping organizations get to where they need to get to, like by building their website, whatever, they're happy. They're going to scream your name from the mountaintop. So it's like free advertisement for her company. And then she's using that to go up to local and then up to federal. And, you know, she might get a federal one. Even you have the local one now, but even if she skipped over local, she could have easily went to federal as well by going that way. So as far as like using the political landscape, tell us how you do that. Cause that's where I'm like, mm, I need to figure that out. <laughs> like the groundbreaking ceremonies, the groundbreaking ceremonies. Um, when you go in and like, what is your strategy when you're going, I know you have a strategy when you go to local networking events, but also why specifically like political events are they different than like the networking events where they have like the healthcare services and you're asking those questions is that like you're going in to take pictures with the mayor is that like how does that go that's exactly what i'm doing that is exactly andre that's exactly what i'm doing so yeah um and it's again going to the places where i want to have a contract this is simple as that so since i love the belt line i pretty much live there as you know on the scooters in atlanta it's like why not so going to the groundbreaking ceremony, shaking hands, meeting the president of the Beltline, introducing mm -hmm. myself. Hi, my name is Bridget. I do this in one sentence. So again, knowing exactly what you have to offer and then asking him, who do I get in contact with for a contract? Like super simple. And he said, go to Bonfire and talk to a lady named Megan. And he gave me her last name. Like it was just that easy. They give you the exact information that you want. And so that's what we did. And so now we are, hopefully we'll get a contract with the Beltline coming up soon. That would be so exciting. And, you know, she's saying the Beltline and they just developed the Beltline. So it's not, it's not like the city of Atlanta. It's not like Fulton County. It's a whole separate sector of Atlanta. Beltline is separate. Like you would go to a whole separate site essentially for the belt line they have their own agenda their own funds and so that's another thing you guys need to think about it's not always because i always say you know city county state whatever they're like oh state contracts okay just you got to drill it even further like the school system has their own yeah. so she's targeting like super specific like this is this is where you know my backyard literally and i want to know how do i get down and they told her exactly what she needs to do, exactly who she needs to go to. Exactly. So she's going to go do it. And then she's going to follow up either with another event or follow up with the name of the person. She already got all these, you know, all the creds. All the creds and they're going to yeah. be like, oh, snap. And she right in the area. Like, no brainer. Yeah. This is regular business. Yeah. This is like, um, yeah. Regular yeah. And also another strategy we use to find who has the money, right? So we like to call it follow the money. And when we were finding out who was spending money on our next coat, so Health and Human Services, they have a lot of categories underneath. They have CDC, the FDA, which is another dream agency I would love to work with, the Food and Drug Administration, um, like your big tobacco tobacco campaigns and things like that. So uh, we found out that they are giving money to the state the state and local departments, right? And they everything is displayed. Everything is public. It's the government. So they tell you who they gave the money to, XYZ organization. So then what we do is that we go to the organization because we know they got the money. And then we find out the problems that they're having, which is on their website, what their mission is. We create an unsolicited proposal. Hey, this is what we can do, right? The peanut butter to their jelly. And then that's how we win a lot of uh, nonprofit and municipality contracts as well. Yo, I know, okay. girl. I know, I know that went over your head. She said, I know what your problem is. I can solve it. Like, and you know, if anybody ever like looked at the SPLOS, I don't know if it's the same name in every state, but like SPLOS funds and like there's different funds that I think they had ARPA funds come out after COVID. They're saying we want to, it comes from federal, it goes down to the state, it goes down to the county and further. And they said, we want to spend this much money on healthcare, this much money on infrastructure yeah. technology, this much money on the road. And she's following what they said it like. <laughs> There's no guessing. 
You can literally Google anything that we're saying right now and you will find it. You just have to like be willing to put in the work. It's not going to fall into your lap. Not every time. It's not going to it's not going to come directly to you. And once you get that path, which clearly Bridget has, once you get that path of how you want to do it, it's repetitive. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Like it's now it's like she can. I, I bet you be doing solicitations in your sleep. Like literally like. Okay, I'm yes, gonna... I love proposals, as you know. <laughs> I love, I feel, once you win, you know, a couple, it's like you can win them all. I mean, that's really how I feel. I'm very, I love this space. I'm so glad you introduced me to it because it's so standard. It's, it's like standard relationships at its best. In commercial space, you got to like juggle, blindfold, tap dance, you know, to get these people to sign your contract. But on this side, it's just clearly state what you do and what problem you solve and go from there. That's one thing I loved about getting the government contract, and especially for my veterans, it's black and white. Like there's, there's not going to be a whole lot of wiggle room. Now, of course, with everything, there's always going to be some nuances. But for the most part, if you, especially if you do residential, anything, okay, and commercial, you know, it's a little bit more streamlined or or structured. But as far as residential and stuff, where you got to bet, you got to put a lien on somebody's house just to get them to pay you. Oh, I ain't with none of them <laughs> games. Not on any day of the week. So that and that was one of the reasons why I started local. I started local because I want to go to your office in case you don't pay me. Like I want to know where your cubicle is so I can get my money. That was literally the reason why I started local. Because I don't want to hear nothing. I don't want to hear about anything other than here's your check. And the thing about federal, it gets a little like that's the same thing that if you watch the the interview with Brent Archie with the supplies, Archie supplies, he said like federal, sometimes people PC, well, for those who don't know military terms, but like they move to another location, they're no longer a card holder. You can't get in touch with anybody for your money. And I am not about none of that. Now, federal usually, <laughs> look, you, my nerves. Okay, federal, usually you get paid on time, but I know a lot of people who have not gotten paid on time when it comes to federal. So I need to be able to reach out and touch somebody directly. Okay, so that's why I was like local and the local is a little more flexible, right? Like for me personally, I had a contract, a county contract, and they gave me, um, they let me, they let me negotiate getting paid every two weeks. Whereas on the federal side, is just a lot of layers of them that oh, they can't do it because it goes through so many processes. Where this person's like, oh, I'm accounts payable, no problem. I'll look out for you. So that was another thing that I loved about local. So. All right, y'all. Don't forget to like this this video. You guys are sticking with us, and we're narrowing. Uh, we're nearing the end, so please, please, please ask your questions. Ask as many questions you want because Bridget, when she start winning these contracts, I might not get her back on this line. Oh my! I'm trying to keep up with she. I'm trying to keep up, y'all. Oh. I'm like she might say, "Look, I ain't got time to do no little interview with you on your little YouTube channel." <laughs> Okay, you so build these relationships. I just don't want to keep starting over when it comes to getting a contract. Once they like, know, and trust you, just like on the commercial side, that transfers over into contracting too. As you, you know, it's a it's a good old boy system. There's a system, you know, anywhere you go. So that's what I want to do. I don't want to have to, you know, jump through hoops each time. I love that. So let's. That's a great segue. So at the federal level, it's, you know, it's similar, but again, you're at the mercy of the person who's the contracting officer. They love you to death, but they retire one day and the next person comes in and they're like, new number, who this? And so you're <laughs> like, what? So expect, can you expound on that a little bit where you like, of course we know you do business with people, you know, like, and trust at the local level. I would say I would go on to say that if you are working in the city of East Point, you probably unless you mess up or unless they have to change you out, you're going to be like the East Point marketer, period, like for forever. So can you expound on that a little bit? Like any thoughts about that? Um, well, I, we actually started building relationships with them in January. It's It, it actually real, real time. It took a year. Um Courting them um, from January uh, when I was with the organization in South Fulton, they actually had an event at the city of East Point helping government contracting companies. And so that's when I was able to build a relationship with the procurement officer 
But, you know, I was so naive and new at that time, a government, government contract, and not even knowing who that person was in a room, which I'm like, I mean, you know. So, but, you know, building those relationships, them knowing your names, and then you just doing a great job. People remember people who do great work at the end of the day. And so when I went to the pre-proposal meeting, as you guys know, when it comes to contracting, we ask those questions. Uh, they immediately knew who I was. They knew my name. Um, they knew my company. And so I already pretty much knew, you know, it was a wrap, you know, when we walked in there. But um, that was a, an amazing feeling to uh, have that relationship. Talk yo ish. I can't tell you how many times I've gone to site visits and then people dapping each other up. And I'm like, I don't know nobody here. I don't know nobody. But they been doing it. They doing business with each other on different projects. Yeah. Like it's yeah. important to go if you have a company that does site visits. It's important to go to these site visits because they might be like, "Look, I can't do this." Con they may win. The person in the room who's at the site visit, just like you, they may say, mm -hmm. "I need help," and I've been seeing you at all these things. Like she said at the very beginning, if you, those who weren't on, friends or frenemies. You know what I mean? Like. Keep your friends close and your enemies close. So don't always look at everyone as an op or as right. op, you know as a person that as your enemy or or your competitor. Make your competitors your what is the word? There's a phrase for that. You know, make them. I don't know what it is, but like work with them. You know, yes. try, try to work with them again. It, it depends on the synergies because you know you can't work with everyone, but just at least try that. I've had after every, damn near every contract that I've won. Someone has called me and was like, look, I saw you won that contract. Let's do some other business together. Because they see that you're obviously capable of putting in something and winning. And they know, you know, what your pricing kind of is with that thing. And it's like they're getting an intro to you. And you like look like, the, you know, be that boss or whatever. Like your company wants something. So, yes, Antonio exactly. is right. And then those people in the room. It's like you you can research them as well. And then like Sheena said, you know, if you get the contract, those can be your subcontractors. You know, you you met them there. You can research their company. You know, they're interested in doing the job number three. So, yeah, that's what we like to do in those virtual conferences. I'm writing down their names, uh, looking up their companies because we may need help. And so that's a, I love that uh, tip as well. Yeah, everyone should know what you do. You know, what I mean, like and. Oh, Lord, if y'all come to anybody saying, well, I do a couple of things. <laughs> That's an automatic red flag, respectfully. Automatic. Practice that thing over and over and over. My my name is... You have to be able to read the room. If you do do many things, just know when to introduce it to the room. You see what I'm saying? If it's something that's real estate related, okay, then put that out there that you do, you know, probably property management or, you know, realty, but don't, you know, say you do, I can't think of what's something that's Cooking. totally Chef. not even in that. Chef. Right. Like what they got to do with the tea in China? Absolutely nothing. So people's ears just usually turn off anything that you say after that, it's going to be irrelevant. And you, you look like you don't really do it for real because mm -hmm. again, if you're a, a newbie, a newbie business or a, a very small business, people are going to say, well, they're automatically going to question, especially if they're in this space. If they're in government contract, they're going to be like, mm, how? You can do certain <laughs> things at certain times, depending on how you do it. But I'm just saying, I'm just saying. So Antonio says, where can you wake up with $97,000 opportunities every day? And, even, and then some. Yes. Every single day. There's another I love opportunity. that. I love it, too. That's fantastic. And thank you, Mental Dialogue, for the super chat. It was getting dry out here, y'all. Bridget is dropping this not specific knowledge. Mm -hmm. Like today. today. Like, forget, well, I'm going to say this. Forget registering it, Sam. You can go and do this stuff like the day after the new year. Find an event. They can go to your Find local web, your local county websites, right? Because they always put their events on. And it's the beginning of the year. I'm like so excited, you guys, because they're going to have a plethora. They got new people. They got new money to spend. And so every event in January, you all should be going to, whether it's a um, coffee, you know, meet and greet. They usually, counties usually have them once a month. I'm pretty sure a lot of them do where they meet at a local business, of course, to support. 
But go to all of those things. I promise you, all the right people will be in that room. Economic development chiefs, all those people are there. That is great advice. So we got Stephanie, my bestie, my other bestie. And she's going to be doing our interview with us soon because her story is amazing as well. So, hey, girl. Um, so I wanted to get into, I kind of lost my whole thought. Wait a minute. Hold on. So as far as the contracts that you got that you didn't have to bid on, can you touch on that? That I didn't have to bid on. Uh, it was it all started from that organization that I joined. And I joined a couple organizations but only the ones that made sense of course because i only have so much time today to go because you have to go into them like you want to build a relationship with the people there they hate when people come in just to push their business and try to leave they don't like that and you won't build so you actually have to get to know people go to the christmas parties and sorays and things like that um so that's how i really built the company in the uh, our community so the municipalities associations the organizations that's how we want our contracts there by joining their communities their groups can you talk about i don't know if i can say the name ul the the urban league yeah talk yeah. about that one how you get yes. there um the urban league so uh again using the past performance from the previous organization that i kind of did the free work for and then having their president being a, a raven fan talk to the president of the urban league um it was it, it was just a win-win situation so um after that now we're their preferred marketing communications company um, and also, oh, they man, introduced, man. introduced us to like Wells Fargo. So now that's going to enter us into the corporate side in 2024, which I'm so excited about. So maybe one day I can come back and talk about the corporate space. You just breeze <laughs> over that so quickly. Like, let's, let's bring, that so exciting? <laughs> bring all that back. Okay. So <laughs> the Urban League is like a nonprofit. What, what is the Urban League? Yeah, so it's a nonprofit that helps underserved communities pretty much pay their rent. And they've been around forever. So you guys, What's you know, it's 100 years, 50 years, like um, they maybe staples about, in, the, in the community. Yeah, they're, like, staples in the, they're like with the NAACP, like that type of group. There we go. They yes, pay your no, rent, no. having hardships, uh, felons, they help you get jobs, um, child care, all the things that underserved communities need. That's They get money, like mil when I say millions of Following that money trail, that's what we did. And we saw that uh, <laughs> Wells Fargo gave them a couple of million dollars, uh, about seven millions of dollars or so. And so that's when we approached them because they were looking for a company to build a directory for the city of Atlanta for a professional real estate ecosystem. And uh, we didn't have any experience in real estate. But then that goes back into having the president of South Fulton talking to the president of the Urban League saying that, this company is the bomb and that's how we got that contract you just like you you tried to sum it up in 15 seconds a few minutes ago that is huge okay for all intents and purposes right the urban league would probably put out some sort of advertisement maybe even a solicitation to procure this service she's saying that she was doing work with a ch with the chamber, right? With the, the is it was it the the airport chamber? Yeah, the chamber. So she was doing work like a little this, a little that with the airport chamber, and they loved her. They worshipped the ground. She worked. She walked on, yeah. right? And mind you, she yeah. said discount free service. She was just always kind of there, so they knew who she was. And then she was like, "Hmm, let me follow the money." found out that the Urban League, which I kind of know that they are like old school as far as the yeah. leadership, which is very common. Yeah. This is common probably everywhere, but very yeah. common in Atlanta. And speaking of which, go ahead and drop your city and state in the chat. Yeah. City, and state, city and state, so you guys can maybe connect with each other, right? So she followed the money to the Urban League. It led, the Yellow Brick Road to the Urban League, right? And found out that they were getting money from ever, everywhere, including very large corporate yeah, yeah. companies like Wells Fargo. Banks. They were getting money from banks. From banks, right? Okay, we got ATL. And then 
she was like, hey, I'm here. Let me start courting you all. And then she didn't even have to finish the sentence because the president of the airport chamber was like, yo, her company is the ish. Use, use them. And they were like, oh, bet. Because what? No like and trust. No like and trust. She was able to get a contract. Wasn't no bidding. They were like, we just want you to come up in here and fix it. We need help. Right? Yeah. Had that contract for how long? So and that said, it's been a year and uh cumulative that contract is now at a hundred K. So that's the yeah, the first year. The first no bidding, year. no bidding, a hundred thousand with no, no bidding. bidding. Being in no bid, they just keep world. pouring money out because it's a nonprofit. They just nonprofit gets a lot of money from the state. So find out where that money's coming from. And they have to give it away. It's a use or lose situation. Yo, okay. So that's something that I don't even really touch on a lot is nonprofits, but they kind of operate similar to like other local agencies because their money is like strict. That's what I do know about it. So they have dollars for specific things. And so they probably had advertising dollars they wasn't spending on nothing because they didn't know who to give it to or how to do it. That's fair to say. That's very fair to say, yeah. And so she came in. They were. It's like when you're you're doing your own bookkeeping, <laughs> right? And then someone's like, "No, I got you." And you have the money. You just haven't figured out who you're gonna use. And they and um and then they don't they, even know how. To use the money. What's that? They don't even know how to use the money because they're they're not marketing experts. So when you can come in and tell them, and I'm great at telling people how to use spend money. So when you come in and let them know how they can spend it with your company to help alleviate their problems, it was a win. It was it was easy. It was really easy. And she used to talk about how they were like, please help <laughs> us. Like they didn't know how to do anything respectfully. Like I know the Urban League is a very reputable nonprofit here in Atlanta for forever. And they so they they're they're gonna get the money continuously because it's not like a pop-up nonprofit or you know a rogue nonprofit where you don't really know where the money's going to. They have proven to help people in the Atlanta area. So they are just like, we got all this money, which sounds so crazy, but we got all this money. Oh, yeah, we did have five million dollars sitting over here for marketing, but we right. know what to do. And so That's that exactly is a very, happened. very that's a very strategic plan that she did. And it started with discount and free. Discount and free. She probably didn't say, like wake up one day like, hmm, I wonder what the Urban League was doing. It just kind of came, you know, with all the other things that she was doing to, to target her market, so to speak. And right. it's still, and it's local. It's local. It's right here. It's right here in Atlanta where we're at. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Cool. So any janitorial here from Massachusetts? I'm from Massachusetts, but yeah. Q, I've been doing Q for a while. And I know Q is one of those people who is like, he after it too. I might need to do an interview with QQ. Love that. Yeah, so I still got some, we still got people hanging in with us. Please ask some more questions and make sure that you like yeah. this video. Um, you can still share it so people can catch the replay. And that's Super Chat. It's all about the Super Chat, okay? So we got... Um, Atlanta, we got the D, Detroit, <laughs> um, Chicago, Birmingham, and I'm assuming that Q, if you're in Detroit, that you're looking to do contracts in Massachusetts. So I got you on that. Um, so yeah, I really, really, you know, want to just drive home the point that there's several ways to skin this cat, right? Bridget took a different approach from what I was asking or well, telling her to do, and it worked out for her. So some people you're gonna you're gonna ask, like, how do I get contracts? How do I do it? There's so many different ways that I couldn't even possibly tell you specifically what may work for you. I'm gonna tell you what worked for me, and I'm gonna say you can probably start here, and that's cool. Like that is a legit way. Or if you're like, I want to be strategic, I don't want to waste time bidding, 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 and not winning. There's a lot of people who have faced that and they, you know, it, they end up just never bidding again. And that's very, very unfortunate. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So Q said a new 
federal contract hot off the press. So he ready to get started on that. That's cool. Um, so Bridget, do you want to share some? We got a few minutes left. Um, I'll leave, you know, keep it open for questions still. If you guys still have questions for Bridget, because she she's dropping really specific knowledge on you guys. And this she didn't have to do this. So show some love. For, and thank you guys for being here, but show some love for she's opening up her company to help you guys, right? Because even we all need help. We all need help, and including myself. So, you know, drop some drop some in the super chat and then ask questions because again, I may not get her back on the line. So do you want to <laughs> share? <laughs> do you want to share some um will it be saved? Yes, it will be in a replay on um YouTube. So do you want to like give some advice for someone who is who is new or wants to change industries or they've been bidding and bidding and they're like, oh my God, this doesn't work. You want to share something? If it's not working, and like, would it be because of the way they're writing their proposals? But I don't even want to go into that. I want to say your capability statement because these are the things that I know, right? You're going to have different iterations of it. You're going to have different versions of your capability statements. Um, when I do reach out to, to these contracting officers, teaming partners, possible primes, I send them a copy of my um, capability statement. So make sure that's uh, primed up. Also, when I do submit a proposal, I create a capability statement that specifically speaks to what they're asking for in the contract. So Everything from the objective to the core competencies to the past performance that's on the capability statement that we submit with the proposal, it speaks to the scope and the deliverables that they're asking for in the RFP. So that's super important. Um, what else? On LinkedIn, when you um, find out there's a title in government in government space, everybody has a title and it's all on LinkedIn. Um, and so definitely look up those key decision makers there and interact with them. You know how people just connect and that's it. You know, when they post things about things in our company or what's going on, um, make sure you engage with them, That make sure that you stay top of mind. And then also uh, my last tip is make sure you have some kind of platform to keep up with all the contracts that you're going to bid on, because yeah, I know you guys are going to bid, 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 but you want to make sure that you know the status of the contract, the status of the people that you spoke with, when you should follow up with them, um, all those great things. So those are my my tips. Those were heavy because um, too often no one really talks about capability statements because people feel like they're not important. It's it's one of those things where you know Bridget is creative, so her her capability statements are out of this world beautiful and effective, right? So people don't talk about them. It's kind of like a resume. Your resume may get you the job. It may not. Yeah. The mm -hmm. But she just mentioned to you all that you have an, a bland, bland or non-specific capability statement is like just throwing your resume out there on Indeed, applying for a job where you're not even saying that that's what you're trying to do. As an employer, I'll let you know you get if you don't do research on my company, okay. I don't care if you scrubbing toilets or not, okay. If it's a resume related job, you need to be specific, and that's the same thing with the capability statement. If you're doing, especially if you're like for us, facility management, we're doing flooring, we're doing our janitorial, we're doing litter pickup, we're doing pressure washing. Yes, so it needs to be specific to all those things. Not every federal solicitation is going to ask for a capability statement, but sometimes they do, especially when it comes to sources sought. If you're familiar with sources sought, that's like the marketing that the that the government does. It's that who who out there, you know? And then you're giving them something. And it's a pressure washing source of sight, and you're like, oh, we just do janitorial. Give up. No, that's not how that works. That's not how that works. So you go to Bridget to get your capability statement updated yeah. because she is the best, and that's no lie. Okay. It's a and marketing that's tool. That's how you use it. When you meet though, when you approach Sheena, you know, you need to have your capability statement up to date so she can just get a snapshot of what your company is about, you know, before she speaks with you. Uh, owners appreciate that. Don't tell me you don't have a capability statement. <laughs> and another thing is LinkedIn. LinkedIn is so powerful. It's probably instead of y'all going to shade room, like get on LinkedIn and create your profile, like real talk. And I'm being, I'm always going to be me. 
LinkedIn, I actually messaged the CEO of T-Mobile mm -hmm. to tell him that he was not, his company wasn't doing a good job of the, uh, what is it, um, diversity and inclusion as far as giving contracts to small businesses. They weren't. And he messaged me right back. And in 15 minutes, I had 10 emails. The CEO <laughs> of T-Mobile through LinkedIn. He probably wouldn't have answered nary email that I sent. But on LinkedIn, I was like, hello, sir. You know, respectfully, it's a very, very powerful tool. And what was the third thing you said? What did I say? What was the third? The third thing, thing was, oh, thank you. Uh, Brittany, Brittany. Br um, also make sure your website is up to date. Even if you don't have a big, beautiful site like Sheena, have a landing, a procurement landing page, which is pretty much your capability statement in a digital format. It has your core competencies, your NAICS codes, past performance, all on a landing page because they are use, using um, the internet more to look for your company. So even on LinkedIn, like we'll put out uh, SME, subject matter expert posts, so that when and contracting officers or obstacles or small business specialists, when they look at our page, we have articles about it. We have past performance that we've done about it. So we're just proving more that we know how to execute that contract. LinkedIn is gold, gold. Beyond gold. And it, and it helps you with partnerships because you're mm -hmm. saying you want to work with, like a lot of people tell me, I don't want to do prime. I want to be a sub to a bigger company. Those bigger companies are doing the same thing and they're going to be impressed by how much you're keeping, you're showing what your company does. And now does that automatically mean you're going to get a contract or not? Of, of course not, but you're trying to put your best foot forward showing the interwebs. Cause you know, when you Google certain things that LinkedIn comes up on Google. So if they're Googling, Googling your company, cause they're not, they don't go directly to LinkedIn. And you did an article like Bridget said about a specific topic. That article is going to come up on LinkedIn on Google, and they're going to be like, "Oh shoot, they they said that they're the industry expert in this, and they have an article every month talking about that topic." Like it only makes sense. Do not, boy, I tell you, if you come to me talking about you don't have a LinkedIn, I'm sorry because I feel like you're not really you're not working like I'm working, and I know that with these contracts, you got to be in this thing. You got to be in it. Like you got to be putting your best foot forward for your company. And the website, yes, it doesn't have to be super califragilistic, but if you're like, I ain't got no website. And if you got a Gmail, don't message me ever. <laughs> or Ymail or Yahoo Hotmail, all the ones we thought was shut down a long time ago, don't. Mm -mm. I thought for sure AOL was gone, but I see them every now and then. I see them every now and then. Do not, because I feel like you're not taking your business seriously and it's a fly by night company. And I'm not a fly by night company. That's that's all respect. So Sheena, all as a prime, respect. as a prime, do you Google subcontractors when you look for companies? Uh, when I look, um, mm -hmm. usually they come to me. I ain't gonna lie. So, so I and I look for specific things because it depends on what it's for. Okay, again, we're in the labor industry. Um, so they may not have the best LinkedIn and all that kind of stuff, but their reviews on Google are spectacular. And, and then I'm looking, you know, I'm looking uh, objectively because mm -hmm. you might have some complaints, but those complaints were just, you know, just complaints. But I see that you are constantly moving. You're constantly, you know, you're doing this for real. Right. <laughs> you know, right. doing this for real. And I don't need anyone who's trying to, get their life together using my company. Now I have done that a hundred percent. I have done that companies that have never done a contract and I've worked with them, but I already saw that they was on this, on this stuff with what they were doing. But if I don't know you and I don't, I'm not even in the same state as you. And I don't know how you get down. How can I trust you? You shouldn't trust me either. You should look at what I have going on to make sure that it's a good match. I might be too colorful, but you may not like my nails. You're like, Sheena be doing too much. I don't like her <laughs> respect. I get it because we need to like when the stuff gets really tough and these contracting officers are going crazy and it's us against them. We got to be on the same page. I've seen it too many times. I don't know if Stephanie's still on, but I know Stephanie can attest to that thing for real. It was like us, it was her, all her people against <laughs> the government. You know what I mean? And it has to be like that. 
So just saying. Okay, we got one more question. We overtime. Thank y'all for sticking with me because you must be really loving it. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. And is it Britannia? I'm sorry, I'm, I messed up your name every time you've been on. <laughs> You're a constant supporter. So I really appreciate you. She be sending super chat after the fact. We need a we need a, a, we need a bell. We need a bell. The cow bell. <laughs> the board, I promise one of these days. But yeah, she's a constant supporter. So I appreciate that. Um, so from Q, recommendations for cheap to more expensive platforms to create a landing page on. Okay. The expert is about to tell you. Cheap, cheap landing, landing pages. pages. The cheapest, the cheapest is Canva. Canva. You can actually create a landing page on. On Canva, mm -hmm. yeah, Canva. that's the cheapest. Um, and all you have to do is buy your URL, which I think is about twelve dollars these days a year. Yeah. Um. So that's one. Uh, after that is your Wix. After that is your Squarespace, and then after that is WordPress. And GoDaddy's in there. Absolutely. Oh, I got your name right, Britannia. Okay. Um. Yeah. Britannia. So okay. GoDaddy's in there somewhere. And with Canva, it's um it's free, right? Unless you get the yeah, it's free. It's yeah, it's free. It's totally free. The only so thing you have to do is just connect your URL to it, and that's through what GoDaddy. Mm -hmm. Yo, that's I mean, damn, thirteen dollars mm -hmm. for the year. You can't get yeah. cheaper than yeah. that. Put your past performance on there. Like that's what's going to be key. Because this year in 2024, the main thing was going to separate companies from the rest along with this AI and everything is your past performance, your personal um, story that your company went through to execute these contracts or projects or whatever that is. So making sure that you display these testimonials, case studies, past performance in 2024 is going to be key. That's number one. Bridget be on my ass about <laughs> testimonials, okay? <laughs> She's like, where are they? I'm like, <laughs> so that's that's another really key point. Wow. And look, we over time and she's still dropping nuggets. Like for real, for real. Make sure if you jumped on late, you like this video and make sure you watch the replay and share with everybody because this, yeah. is a, uh, this is a topic that a lot of people don't talk about and that's marketing and branding. And that's something in the government space that I didn't think I needed. I was, it was I was doing whatever. I was so rogue. It was crazy. Was I winning contracts? Yeah. But like uh, again, now that we're post post ish COVID, she's saying that they want to know how you different, sis. Mm -hmm. like, we need to know. We need to. We want to connect with you. And mm -hmm. that was hard for me because I'm like, oh, you know, no face, no case type thing. I didn't want to be seen anywhere. Just like hit, let my work show. And that's cool. But that person who's showing their story and how they were able to retain all their employees during COVID, y'all got the same credentials, same background, same time. They're going to see that and throw you away. That's a fact. Now, that's a fact, okay? Oh, they don't care about the pricing. That That's kind of easing up a little bit. They, people have been burned. Do you understand? Like, these companies, these agencies are getting the lowest bidder, getting screwed over royally, paying more money. They're not on that pricing like they were. Okay, this is somebody who's we've been in on. I don't know if Caitlin's still on, but we've been on multiple contracts a week. So they they're like, look, we ain't looking for lowest price. We're looking for best quality. So you hire Bridges team to brand your business, to make you look real sexy online, and teach you about <laughs> all the stuff that she tries to force me to do. Teach you about how to make your business presentable, you know, at the very least. Absolutely. Absolutely. So like Shannon said, you know, even if you didn't have the branding, yes, she can still win contracts, but you got to think about positioning, right? So once you see that amazing website and then you have those testimonials, now that's going to place her differently in your mind. Because now she's a boss versus somebody who just wins contracts. It's a difference. It's a difference. Yeah. And it goes back again to people that want to work with you that are larger companies, you know, your peers, all of those things where they're looking you up too. You know, they're, they're going to see like, okay, this is a real because someone told me about them, but let me just go see if they really do stuff. And then you, you're showing the best of yourself. It's going to be impressive. So Q, um, I myself have a PDF capability statement and Google business. The Google, yeah, Google My Business, whatever, not whatever, but Google My Business. Um, does that still get looked at the same? Um, you want to touch on that? 
the dot it's a dot net. Oh perfect, yeah. Dot net email. Oh, um, no, you need your you need your business name and your email just straight up. Straight up, whether it's you know QB at your business name dot com. Like that's what it needs to be. Well, he has, I guess he's saying that right. it's like qbcleaners.net. Oh, the website. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. That but that's as far as I would extend it to. Dot org dot com dot org dot, dot net. That's that's about it. Um, unless you're in the tech industry, then you know it just starts to get funky from there. <laughs> yeah, with those letters <laughs> and all that. Yeah, and I guess that I don't think it's that. Yeah, that gets a little confusing. Um, and you're saying the PDF. So I don't know if you heard earlier when she said that when she's reaching out to agency agencies, she sends her um, capability statement to them. So yeah, I mean that's fine. You know, but if you if you don't have a website and you're like, how do I get started with the cheapest, cheapest, cheapest? She just told you Canva and your domain, and that's essentially no more than fifteen dollars for the whole year. And you can always update it because Canva is free to a point. You know. Um, yeah, he said, uh, Google my business website. Yes. So transitioning to federal arena, 80%, keeping 20% commercial and possibly city. Yep. That's cool. That's a, that's a, a fine plan, you know? So, okay, we're going to go ahead. We're over time. Any last questions? Ask them quick, 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 quick. Um, thank you all for participating and asking the questions. Bridget is, she shared the knowledge in her brain for y'all and her company and that deserves super chat and also sharing this video of course as soon as we end it's going to be already posted and um you can catch the replay if you came in a little late share it make sure you like it everybody need to like comment subscribe like comment subscribe if you're not already subscribed um and just share that's how this algorithm works you share you share you share um and so, Ann, I know, Ann, you came a little late. Uh, great info. Thanks. Have to rewatch. So if there's no other questions, y'all, we are going to be Audi 5000. Thank you so much, Bridget. You are the bomb.com. You know, I love you with my whole heart. And I love, what you, I love what you do. And I mean that because I won't say it if I don't mean it. <laughs> that's, that's a fact. So <laughs> doing what you're doing. And <laughs> as these contracts come rolling in, I'm going to bring you back. And you can just kind of show, you know, show and tell if you want with uh, the things that you've been able to do. Because I know you had a very specific goal for this year and then a very specific goal for Look, I couldn't get Bridget on the phone. She's like, I got a goal. I don't yeah. want to hear it. I ain't texting back. I was like, but friend. <laughs> she I'm put me like, in this. And now that I'm obsessed <laughs> with I'm looking like, at yeah. contracts and bidding. <laughs> and anybody who knows Stephanie, I know for sure. Q, I know for sure. Y'all be bidding like a month. Y'all are in this thing, so you know you can understand the sentiment of like, oh, I found something. I'm gonna bid on it and get all this money. So definitely, definitely appreciate you being with us. And again, thank you for all that you do. I'm gonna put her information in the description. Where can they find you though? Because I think you might have started like a YouTube. Yeah. So. Um, I, my Instagram first is CEO design show. And that's where it's more of an intimate level of me as a business owner, as an advertising firm owner, going through these, navigating through these waters of government contracting. So, uh, that, and then also the YouTube, which is one mil, one year, one mil, one year. And so again, an intimate journey of what we're doing pretty much almost every day to contacting people to how we're maneuvering through, how we're bidding all of that. So follow me. Yo, I got it. So that's the Instagram, right? And then you said the YouTube is, is it one? One mil, one year. Dollar one sign. Year. Sign for that dollar mm -hmm. sign. One mil, one year. Wait, a dollar sign in the front? Mm-hmm. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, a dollar sign and then one. And then mil, mil, one year. Y E A R. Yep. One okay. mil, one year. So this is our, so CEO Design Show is the Instagram, and then y'all, this is her, this is her YouTube, yo. She's gonna be sharing all this information. One thing I really love about Brid well, one of the many things I love about Bridget is she is super specific. Like her detail is unmatched. Like to where you're like, I don't understand. She'll break <laughs> it down 
Barney. Sometimes I need Barney and she'll help you with the scenario, like understanding this is how you do this specific thing in this specific way using this specific thought process. And that is not easy. Okay. She's very patient. <laughs> And sometimes I'm not even that patient. So please reach out <laughs> and don't look, leave, leave with value. Okay. Leave with value. Yes, <laughs> Cause you might get left on red, but leave with value. But if you're looking for services and if you're looking to partner, this is, this is the lady for real, for real. All so, my advertising people for sure. And even if you're not advertising, I love to send out contracts that I see in Bonfire. I tell Sheena, it's like a gift you're giving somebody. Like, look what, look at what I found just for you, Antonio. <laughs> petroleum contract. Hey. Like, that makes me feel good to give these things out to people. So definitely connect with me. That's all fact. Because people ask, where do you find them? So Bridget says she's willing to do that because she just loves the, loves the game. So Okay, no last questions. Make sure you follow her YouTube, subscribe, you know, catch and tell her, hey, we want a video like this. So she can go ahead and do those videos and share her journey to one meal and 2024. Go ahead and declare what you want for 2024. Okay, because you only got a couple more days, a day left of 2023. And if you like me, you ready to throw 2023, you, you ready to throw it out. So get to 2024, okay, with your new goals, your new mindset, new year, new you. So until next time, it's your favorite veteran. Thank you, Bridget. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.